understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you are not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under 5 minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed. Hi everyone, it's your girl Diana Hamilton and come the 20th of August, I will be at the Top Top Send GMA, the biggest event in Columbus, Ohio. I hope you're not missing it. I cannot wait to see you, to sing with you, to dance with you for the Top Top GMA, Columbus, Ohio. God bless you. Let's see you there. It's GMA USA for the culture and the music. Live activities more coming on politics, sports, social entertainment and everything that you request. My name is Sanko Fatina, so I'm going to be part and parcel of it. And of course, OT Radio has come to say this is the sound of our people. A very, very, very good evening to you all. And welcome to your number one show on your Thursday evening time. We're tap tap send with your servant, Nana Kwame Osaitu. I'm going to be with you from now uh, till 9 p.m. London time. Um, and as you know, today we've got import, two important guests on this show talking about a very important topic that we've all been talking about. Ghana card passports, visas, all that you need is to say glue to your seat this evening. And all that you need to hear about pass, Ghana, Ghana card, Ghana passports, you're going to get it this evening right on this show. I want to say a big thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. And I also want to say a big thank you to Tap Tap Sen for supporting us, for us to be able to uh, bring this show to you every evening. And also a very big thank you to our new partner, Dasra Insurance. I would like to invite Mauto to join us and tell us something brief about uh, Tap Tap Sen, what we need to know this week, any update that we need to know. And straight up, we will zoom to our guest for tonight. Ora Mauto, good evening and welcome to the show. Oh, 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 I need to. One minute. Hello, hello, Malta. Are you there? Uh, it looks like I'm missing Malta this evening on the show. Um, it's not live. Uh, Chris, he will be joining us shortly, so I don't know if you have other things to do. All right, cool. He's settling in, please. All right, cool. Fantastic. Um, before that. The only boss with one S. Happy new month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Oh, do you know why life has been made so easy? It's because of Tap Tap Send. People, Tap Tap Send is here to make your life easy if you want to transfer money to Ghana, if you want to transfer from USA, if you want to transfer from UK, Europe, Canada, a lot of places all to Ghana. And guess what? When it comes to Ghana, there's no e levy charge. So, what are you waiting for? Download Tap Tap Send on Google Play Store and App Store and be ready for exciting offers coming your way each time, every time on Tap Tap Send. Tap, tap, send. Send more, spend less. At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you're not around. 
With our diaspora funeral cash plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed. Hi everyone, it's your girl Diana Hamilton and come the 20th of August, I will be at the Top Top Send GMA, the biggest event in Columbus, Ohio. I hope you're not missing it. I cannot wait to see you, to sing with you, to dance with you for the Top Top GMA, Columbus, Ohio. God bless you. Let's see you there. It's GMA USA for the culture and the music. Reminding you that this is the sound of Africa. OT Radio is live and alive. This is the time we open the house and this. This is the newest version, of course, the greatest time of our moments now. OT Radio has come to stay. Tune in on www.otradiouk.com. And of course, we have live activities more coming on politics, sports, Social entertainment and everything that you request. My name is Sanko Fatina, so I'm gonna be part and parcel of it. And of course, OT Radio has come to say this is the summer of our people. Thank you, producer. Uh, whilst we wait for Malto, I'll bring Malto in uh, until of the program. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. All right, cool, All right. cool, cool, cool. Malto, welcome to the show. And can you uh, give us a brief uh, update on TapTap? Tap? And right from there, I will introduce my guest for tonight. Wow. Good evening. Uh, and, and all our lovely listeners. I hear we have 200 people on the show today. So good evening to all of you. And um, thanks for joining us today. We did the Kokuba to Abraham. Um, I am from Peki in the Volta region. I was born at 37 Military Hospital. I lived in Medina all my life. I went to Presec Legon. I went to Legon <laughs> University. But for the last 18 years and 19 years, I've lived in London. And I happen to be the good director of Africa for Tap Tap Send. And I'll come here also in Every single week I tell you this so that you remember, say, the boy from Peki is the yeah. one who is leading Tap Tap Send Africa. So... It's, 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 it's great to see you all. Why do we do this show every week? We join here to me because we want to hear your thoughts, we want to hear your comments, we want to hear your suggestions, we want to hear your complaints, both about Tap Tap Send and what is happening in your world. And I wish you all, I, let's, let's have a really good show. This week, I've been in Germany talking to Kofi. I'm still in Germany. I just got to have a to find a place to do a call, talking to customers, meeting people, and hearing how. Uh, German customers are feeling when they send money and the payment systems and the 3DS and all the different things that happen in Germany. And this week, we are, we've, we are, we've also been working towards the, the program we have in Italy this weekend. So don't think that this show is uh, just UK focus. We are, we are global tap tap send and we spend time in all the different regions. We are coming to US very soon. I'm sure that I'll come and talk about it as we, as, as, as we go along. So Wherever you are, in whichever corner of the world you are, and you're a tap tap send customer, and you're one of us, Mr. Ewa, if there's something going on, let us know, and we'll try and see if we can support you. We'll try and see if we can come. We want to be community focused. We want to be community based, and we want to be supporting the things that matter to you as Ghanaians who live in the diaspora. I'll be here throughout the show, and I'll be listening for all the things you have to say. The one thing I mentioned is that the city is also still depreciating, so. The rates have been going higher and higher and higher and higher. And I'll keep telling you that we, as a remittance company, would continue to maintain our responsibility to not contribute to the speculation in the market because by the nature of our business, you know, you're dealing in a lot of ethics. And the things that we do could affect where the city is going. If you're a Ghanaian and you're a bogger and you live outside the country, I'm sure that the rates being higher it's very nice and it's very good. But I also urge you, sir, if we are not always pushing the rates up, it's because we are thinking of Ghana small. Because the, 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 the more we kind of control the rates a little bit, the better for the city and the better for our economy and the better for Ghana. I'll be here throughout the show. I'll be on my laptop in about two minutes and I'll be listening. And who will questions be? Ah, Mr. Well, let's talk about it at the end of the show. And I can give you my views and, and, see, and see how you're all doing. Then I'll come back to you. Thank you, Malto. Reporting live from Germany, Berlin. Hi, Mr. Foster. What joining you, Mr. Wa? Mute yourself. 
um do time question time i will ask you to uh, unmute yourself and ask questions so please if you are on the call please uh meet yourself uh so that we can have a very uh good show this evening uh, so that we can meet everyone um right this is the time that we've been waiting for uh for some time now we've been talking about ghana card um others has been talking about uh ghana passport ghana visas and then you may we are very fortunate very 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 fortunate to have uh the ghana high commissioner uk Papa Osu Ankuma, UK and Ireland, Papa Osu Ankuma with us on this call. And not just him, we also have the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, and so Abe Joinye and Enumri. At the end, Komo and Omoni and Ewo Etutri and Enumri said, Yemidi Kai Kai. And we'll be talking about Ganaka. We are going to talk about passport issues and we're going to talk about uh, visas uh, uh, in the diaspora. And Enumri, main Chebibri. I will, introduce, I will introduce to you Papa Ousu Ankuma, the Ghana High Commissioner to the UK and Ireland, uh, to talk to us and also introduce to us the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs. Yeah, yeah, Papa. And then you may on your air Baba Chichi Ankuma. Papa, yeah, my Ajo, I'm going to talk about Papa, you may be so. Did he say Munina, Mohoye, and Enumere, Ewo, Yemfie, Ewo Yuki? Yamiadum, Yamiadum, Yamoya Papa, a Yemen Nijisu, and you breathe a Nemo BD is our swap. It's our seven himself. Who programming the equity for Papa? Na. Yabo Honorable Kweku and Prochum Sapo, MP for Mampo, and Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. I don't know if you know. Now, we have seen you, sir, and Nifa, and oh, yeah. Ah, we have seen you, we have seen you, and oh, yeah, and oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Macarius E. Akanbong. I'm saying I'm a screener, a freezy kakra. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to try to contact you. Let me hear what is happening at the end. It looks like I said on my screen, uh, freezy kakra yen te o mon kasabri. Inti mi se mwa mwenyabu trena yen try to connect them so that um omu biti mi a connect te ewa hano mo ede amaye. At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you're not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance... Boss with one S. Happy new month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Do you know why life has been made so easy? It's because of TapTapSend. People, TapTapSend is here to make your life easy if you want to transfer money to Ghana, if you want to transfer from USA, if you want to transfer from UK, Europe, Canada, a lot of places all to Ghana. And guess what? When it comes to Ghana, there's no e levy charge. So, what are you waiting for? Download TapTapSend from Google Play Store and App Store and be ready for exciting offers coming your way each time, every time on TapTapSend. Tap, tap, send. Send more, spend less. Your peace of mind is guaranteed. Akumo! 
Hi everyone, it's your girl Diana Hamilton and come the 20th of August, I will be at the Top Top Send GMA, the biggest event in Columbus, Ohio. I hope you're not missing it. I cannot wait to see you, to sing with you, to dance with you for the Top Top GMA, Columbus, Ohio. God bless you. Let's see you there. It's GMA USA for the culture and the music. Mamma mia, mamma mia, Italy, Namasa Deneco, God willing, 13th of August, Ghana party in the park, Italy, Ghana beyond, for me, about our life, a very trust from the spirit, trust every issue. I feel this say, now die, now I see you, my name is DJ, DJ Tan, you have a say, big shout to DJ Kobe, trust, gratia. Oh, hello, I'm from Calibos, I'm from Nipia, the only boss. With one S. So the good news is very simple. Now it's Tap Tap Send Ghana Music Awards USA. Of course, official headliner sponsor for the Ghana Music Awards USA. So it's happening on the 20th of August. Yes, inside the Lincoln Theater, Columbus, Ohio. A bit of Guta. Tap Tap Send Ghana Music Awards USA. <laughs> The Tap Tap Send Ghana Music Awards 2022. The Music Mac. Thank you very much, producer, for your support. Yes, uh, we are back again, and I'll go straight to uh, the Ghana High Commissioner to UK and Ireland uh, to introduce um, our guests for tonight to us and give us a short address. And also, we move on to the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs to talk to us about Ghana Card, passport, and visas issues in the UK and in the diaspora. As a matter of fact. Yeah, in your issue. Thank you very much, OT. Thank I you. Hope hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you very yes, much. Uh, sorry. We have some technological challenges. As, as I was saying, you know that uh, for some time now, we've been having a few challenges with our system. There have been a lot of complaints. But as it is with every system, we try and improve upon our services as a mission as we go on. So for our, over the past two or three years, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration back home has been looking at the ways to improve upon the delivery of its consular services in the missions abroad. And a decision has been taken to introduce some new measures that will improve the, our services. And it has been decided that the UK, that is London, and a few other missions be used as a pilot. However, London is the first. So as I speak, we have a very powerful technical team from Accra working at our passport and immigration section at the Highgate. And we are also expecting a team from Switzerland to also come and fix new equipment. Well, the deputy minister in due time will give us a brief on what is happening. Suffice to say that 
We believe that before any new thing is introduced, it is important to engage your clients so that we may brief you on the steps we are taking, the intention of the new systems. And if there are any misgivings, we try and, as it were, polish it up or take it into consideration so that in delivering our services, we can say that we have delivered first class services. But let me say that when it comes to visas, for example, I believe that we are doing better than the leading countries in the world. Because when it comes to visas, we have 24 hour visas. You apply for the visa, you are given an appointment within four days. When you appear at the mission and you go through the processes, within 24 hours, you're going to get a visa. It doesn't work anywhere. And of course, even with our passports, of course, when you are given a date for your biometrics to be taken, it takes maximum 15 working days for you to get a passport. I know that in this country, as of these days when you apply for passports, it takes quite a while. I've been the subject of uh, debate in parliament, et cetera, et cetera. But I also admit, that we have shortcomings, but we always try to improve so that the shortcomings will be fewer and fewer. Having said this, uh, it's my pleasure to invite the Honorable Kweku Aprachum Sapo, as I said, Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and MP for Mampo, to tell us what government has in store for us in terms of improvement of services. And I must say that, well, uh, the Honorable Deputy Minister is one of you. I mean, I came to know him in the early 90s. He was resident here. You know, he's worked in so many places in your, is it your boroughs or whatever, his housing, expert in housing, etc. So he knows more about you and the UK than I do. I'm just your, your guest for a few years. So, Honorable Deputy Minister, please, uh, you can then engage us. And I'm sure at the end of the day, we'll find it rewarding. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. I never knew you knew the places where I worked when I was. <laughs> Please, the ambassador, you've done a lot of homework. <laughs> I worked in Haringey, I worked yes. in uh, uh, Lambeth, yes. and then uh, I, I ended up with uh, Hackney Council for 15 years. All right. Before I went on to work for another organization called Hanover in Hackney. Mm. And, uh, so uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us the, this opportunity. Um, the Honorable His Excellency, Papa Usuan Kuma has uh, laid the groundwork. And uh, as mentioned, uh, I have come here to uh, the UK specifically this time with my team from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, my Director of Legal Affairs, uh, Mr. Makarios Akambo, uh, my Director for Consular Services or Consular Affairs, Dr. Senelo Yaoli, and then uh, my third other uh, colleague who came along is uh, Mr. Fred Amangua, also from our uh, consular and uh, immigration. Um, we are here to, as the ambassador mentioned earlier, recording in progress, uh, is to engage with uh, our compatriots in the UK with regards to uh, some innovative ways that the ministry and government uh, thinks we can introduce to be able to improve 
the consular services that we give to our compatriots in the UK and in the diaspora. Um, consular work at every mission happens to be the number one or the face of the mission. It is the main angle through which uh, the missions in, interface and interact with our compatriots in those particular countries. And with the consular work, we have passport, we have visas, we have attestation, and we have welfare matters. Now, these are matters that are of importance to the Danians in diaspora. They are not really interested in the kinds of discussions that we are having with the British government or uh, other matters that we might be dealing with. But matters that are of their uh, key interests are to do with their passports, their visas, and their welfare issues. So consular matters are number one. It is normally the avenue through which our compatriots judge the mission and even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as to whether we are up to what is expected of us. As the ambassador mentioned, at the Ghana mission here and outside, the officers do their very best. I will always defend our officers at our mission. They are doing their best. I have, as you mentioned, lived in the UK for quite some time. I am very much aware of how the missions have functioned in the 80s, in the 90s, and then in the 20s and uh, 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 as it's going on. So I know at every stage how the missions have worked and how Ghanaians have received the work that they have been doing. Uh, being able to satisfy the average Ghanaian in the UK is a big task. No matter what you do, you still have some people who will complain. Of late, we have had people come on social media and other forms of uh, interaction to the uh, make audios, videos, alleging and attacking and running down the integrity of our officers. Some say taking bribes, some doing this, some doing that. Now, the unfortunate thing is, of all these cases that have recently come up, we have always investigated. And wherever we have gone to investigate, either the people who are making the allegations, when we try to get to them so that we can get better and uh, further particulars, to be able to interrogate and investigate, we have hit a brick wall. Either they disappear all of a sudden when we try to make contact with them, or we hit a brick wall. We are not able to go further because either you can find them or when you find them, you are not prepared to talk. It has made our work very, very, very difficult. And I think uh, it is not only happening in, uh, in London here or in the UK here, it is happening in other countries. In Dubai, a similar one has been going around in the last two weeks where you find some two young men in one particular uh, case and then another young lady in another case or alleged that our mission in Dubai has been issuing passport to Nigerians and the Nigerians are using it to spoil the name of Ghana and that the Nigerians, some of them have been arrested by the Dubai police. We have gone into it, we've gone to the Dubai police on three occasions and they have always said to us that they have not uh, arrested any Ghanaian or any person holding a Ghanaian passport to have indulged himself or herself in uh, some more practice or, or some criminal act. In the UK, it's happening. In the Americas, it is happening. Uh, unfortunately, we think it is a high time those who are doing those, uh, for want of a better word, I would want to say is either fake or maybe politically inclined or politically induced uh, 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 these audios and, uh, and, 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 uh, and videos to attack and run down the integrity of our officers. The officers at the mission are officers who are well trained. Uh, a lot of them are very good career diplomats who revere the work that they are doing. And I, I don't see any reason why they would want to indulge themselves in this kind of uh, uh, activities. 
uh, that will bring their name and the mission into disrepute. So we have to be on our guard against this kind of uh, uh, audio that is appearing on social media. Now, government, I am not by this saying that the work that our officers do at the mission is 100%. There is no institution in this whole wild world where you will find that institution working at a 100% acceptable rate. And especially in the UK, where it is very difficult to satisfy the average Ghanaian. No matter what you do, they will still find some fault to do with your work. But having said that, the government also do recognize that definitely there is always room for improvement. And that even though some people are making all these noise about the uh, 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 not too good a service that is coming from our mission, the government is still finding that we need to look at the work that we are doing. We need to look at service delivery and then see how we can improve it. Now, in the acquisition or the application of passports and the acquisition of visas, is an area government has to look at it, and including the whole of the consular services that we provide. And we run a pilot in Ghana where in the application for passports, there is a company in Ghana called VFS. VFS have been provided consular services to some other foreign missions in Ghana, where when you want to apply for, for visa, you can't go to the mission direct, you have to go through VFS as an intermediary. VFS provides services, for example, to the British, High Commission in Ghana, where when you want to apply for visa, you can't go to the British Embassy direct, you have to go through VFS, and they will do what is called the front-end premium service. In Ghana, we also do uh, contracting the VFS company to provide front-end uh, premium service for the application and acquisition of uh, passports. For the past four years, they've done an excellent job and the rating for their services has been very, very, very high. As a result of that, the government then decided that if this pilot has worked perfectly well, then let us look at extending that kind of front end premium service to our diasporans. As a result of that, the government looked at what, which companies in the country uh, can actually provide that kind of service. As we speak, there are two companies that have been doing this front-end premium service work. One is the VFS, which I've just mentioned, currently working for Ghana with the application of passports. And the other one has been Access uh, uh, Ghana Limited. Access Ghana Limited is the company that the government has signed up with to provide uh, a front end premium service in the UK and some other, uh, 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 other countries to provide um, the front end service in the application of passports, the acquisition of visas, and there will be other allied uh, uh, consular services like attestations. Access Ghana Limited is a company who in Ghana presently are the conduit through which if you want to apply for a visa to Spain or to Greece, you have to go through. You can't go to the Spanish embassy direct or the Greek embassy direct. You have to pass your application through Access Ghana Limited in Ghana. In outside Ghana, Access also uh, operates in Dubai, they operate in Saudi, they operate in Lebanon, they operate in Portugal, they operate in South Africa. In South Africa, for example, if you want a visa to stay, you have to go through Access. So Access is a company tried and tested. They have been in the industry for a number of years. They have the, uh, a good number of staff who know the business. And so the government thought that between access and VFS, one of them we selected, we selected access because already we have given business to VFS. So access has been selected and they are going to provide the front end premium service. Uh, once we finish with this sensitization or this engagement, 
with our uh, compatriots in London, and then uh, we go through all the necessary motions and the training and whatever. Come first September, ASSES intend to start operations. Their offices are located at Central London and uh, next to Tower Hill uh, uh, Station on Fenchurch Street. And when you go to ASSES, when you go to ASSES, for them to assist you in your application for a passport or visa, there is a fee that you pay. The fee is 45 pounds. That will be on top of what you pay when you apply for the passport or the visa. When you apply for the visa, you do it on the internet or the passport, you do it on the internet and on the internet, you make your payment. When you go to access, to ask him to provide this extra service for you, you will pay access when you go there. It is not compulsory, and I repeat, it is not compulsory for you to decide to go and use the services of access. It is optional. If you choose, you can still go through the, our uh, uh, high gate, and you will also be seen to, and your case will be processed. But if you want the extra services that access intends to provide, if you come to them, they will charge you the 45 pounds. Now, the 45 pounds that access is charging, a percentage of it will be paid to the Ghana mission or to Ghana government. Now, at access, they have a very nice office. The ambience is number one. You go in there, and you are attended to within a very short time. You go there and you want uh, ice water, they will give you. If you want room temperature, they will give you. If you want cocoa, if you want coffee, you want uh, whatever beverage that you want, uh, even minerals will be served. What I have been told is that they will not serve alcoholic beverage over there. So, and then, uh, if you want to come and do your application at access, yes, you have that opportunity. They have officers readily at hand to also help you to go through your application. And if you make a mistake and you need somebody to help you to make the necessary changes or necessary corrections at the access office, they will be prepared to help you. If you need to take a photograph, they will, you will get the photograph taken over there. If you want photocopies to be done, you get photocopies taken over there. Now, once you've gone through all these processes, which we call the front end, at the access office, you can also have your biometrics taken uh, in a day or two as you apply. Now, we all know that in most cases when we apply for passports outside, it is when to get a slot to take your biometrics that can delay your application. In the normal application that we go through at Highgate, because a large number of Ghanaians do make these applications, when you go on the portal and you are trying to get a slot, normally it is what is available. So when there is no slot available, you are likely to be pushed further and further. And this is one area where a lot of complaints, people appear not to understand why it is so. But if the slot is not available, it's not available. You don't blame the officers working at the mission, because there is no way the officers at the mission can intentionally block these slots. It is not possible for them to do that. If they do it, they will be found out, and then they will be dealt with. So they never do that. Now, when you go to access, access has a facility where when it comes to the slots for them to be able to take your biometrics, they are able to do it within a day or two for you. And then once your biometrics are taken, they will do, uh, they will make sure that your application, you've crossed all the T's and dot all the I's. But even them helping you to do that does not mean that it is access who is going to clear you. They try to do their possible best. The actual betting of your application is done by our Highgate office and our, our mission. So when the front end has been done by access and the biometrics have been taken. We then, access will then submit it to the back end. And the back end is at the Ghana mission in Highgate. And that is where the final checks are done and then the passport is issued. 
Now, what is going to happen is with assets coming on board, once we go through the front end and all the T's have been crossed and all the I's dotted, once you move on to the back end, it is more than likely that within the timeline that we have given, which is the 15 working days, your passport should be ready. This is the extra innovative service that government has decided to introduce for our compatriots outside the country, with assets being the company to provide that kind of uh, services. Assets has indicated that they are prepared to work on Saturdays to accommodate the needs of our compatriots. Because in most cases, from Monday to Friday, majority of our compatriots are at work. Finding time to go to Highgate has been a challenge. So ASSES has agreed that in the service delivery, they will look at working on Saturdays. And then also, they are also looking at working on some holidays. And they also are going to provide a service where if you need and ask for it, they will be able to deliver your passport to you by courier. You don't have to come there to pick it up, but you have to request all will be in the package of the 45, uh, 45 pounds that they will be charged. But in the course uh, of your application being in the process or being processed, they will, you, they will be giving you updates through SMS, telephone calls, emails, and other uh, communication channels that are uh, uh, available. So they come with a package that we think will ease the pressure on our officers at Highgate, enable them to attend to other equally important and pressing matters in the consular session and in other sessions of the, of the, of the embassy. The sum total of it will be efficiency and service delivery and the total outcome that will be of benefit to Ghanaians in general. So ladies and gentlemen, this evening, I am introducing and presenting to you Access Ghana Limited, a company that we have signed with to provide the uh, consular services initially for passports and visas. Now, with visas, you follow the same pattern. You go to them, you make your application on the portal, you go to them, they will assist you to go through the various processes, and then they will push it to the, uh, the back end, which is the Highgate office. The Highgate will issue it again if you want. They will uh, deliver it to you by SMS. Oh, sorry, by courier. Um, that is what they bring on the table. Also, for the visa services that Access is going to provide, that is also optional. It's not composite. They will charge you 45 pounds, of which a percentage of it is coming to the Ghana mission and the government of Ghana. So we think it's a good deal that we are recommending to Ghanaians in diaspora, and we are encouraging you that uh, make use of it, because as we know, we have had people come on social media, videos and audios complaining that uh, they were charged 50 pounds here, they were charged 100 pounds here, they were charged 200 pounds here to facilitate the application for passport and the acquisition of visas. Now, if you are paying 50, access is 45. So at least you are saving five pounds there. If it's 100, you are saving 55. Meanwhile, you are getting a service that you don't need to look over your shoulder because you are not doing anything fraudulent or anything unacceptable. So for uh, uh, Ghanaians in diaspora, I am making this recommendation to, to you to consider using the services of uh, access if you want to fast track uh, your uh, passport application and visa uh, uh, application. Highgate will continue to function. Highgate will continue to receive and to process passports and visas. They will continue to do their utmost best to serve Ghana as they have, uh, to serve Ghanaians and our compatriots as they have been doing. They will not relent. They will slow down. Everything will be then with to cross immigration and then be able to enter into the land. 
That is when you are traveling to Ghana. But if you are returning from Ghana back to uh, any overseas country, you cannot, as of now, you cannot use the Ghana card as a travel document. Ghana card, so for now, is partially a travel document to enable you to travel from an overseas country to Ghana. But when you are returning, you are going to need your passport because the country that you are going to or returning to will definitely need to see your passport with your right of residence or your right of abode. For now, we haven't gotten to the stage, even though Ghana card is ARCAO compliant, ARCAO International Civil Aviation Authority organization has uh, accepted uh, 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 Ghana card, you cannot use it as a travel card from Ghana to another country, but you can use it from other countries to Ghana. But even here, let me sound a little bit of caution. It is not every country in the whole wild world that will allow a Ghanaian to travel on Ghana card to Ghana. It is on a bilateral basis. And so far, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has initiated moves to bilaterally contact these other countries, having discussions, we've written to them to facilitate and allow Ghanaians to use their Ghana card to travel to Ghana. And so that is the position there on the Ghana card. Now, Ghana card, you can use it to travel within the whole West Africa zone. But even if you look at the Ghana card, the name on it is called ECOWAS card. But unfortunately, in ECOWAS, even though ECOWAS has agreed years back that there's free movement of ECOWAS citizens within the ECOWAS region, and that all that an ECOWAS citizen needs to show is to show his or her ID that identifies him or herself as an ECOWAS citizen. He should be able to travel within the ECOWAS region, and he should be able to go and stay in an ECOWAS country for a maximum of 90 days. Now, unfortunately, within even the ECOWAS region, not all the ECOWAS countries have produced their national ID cards. Ghana is one of the leading lights who have uh, championed this course of uh, ECOWAS uh, card or Ghana card. So within the region, yes, you can use it to travel. But outside the ECOWAS region, some countries may pose a bit of a difficulty or a challenge. We have not graduated to the stage where Ghana card will become a fully fledged travel card. We haven't done it. No, fully fledged. For now, it is partial. But gradually, we are getting there. I know my compatriots in the UK are very keen to know when um, the National Identification Authority will be in the UK to start uh, the issuance of Ghana card. Um, as we speak, the process has started. The NIA are going to train our consular officers as our missions to act as registration officers. The training will be starting in the next week or two. And the plan is, once the training is done, they will then start moving their machines to the various missions. And then they are hoping that by the 12th of September, if everything goes according to plan, then they will be able to start uh, coming to the missions. Now, you are going to need, by the rules of uh, uh, acquiring Ghana card, is uh, even if you are dual national, a British Ghanaian, you will qualify to have a Ghana card. You are going to need a birth certificate or a baptismal certificate or where the applicant is unable to produce any of these documents, the NIA shall require a relative of that applicant to identify the applicant under oath. So if you don't have any of these, and you have a relative who will be able to vouch for you or to stand in and say that, yes, Kokumenu is a Ghanaian born in Ashanti Mampo of Ghanaian parents, that person will have to do it under oath. 
And in the missions abroad, the law has designated the head of mission, the head of mission or the ambassadors as commissioner for life who will be able to administer the uh, attestation or the affidavit for anybody who wants to vouch for somebody. So uh, I believe that God being so good, by the middle of September, uh, the registration of Ghanaians for Ghana card will commence. The final point I want to make is that in the last couple of months, some of our compatriots in diaspora who visited home had attempted to acquire Ghana card. Some of them applied. By the time they were returning, their cars were not ready, so they left. Now, the executive secretary of the uh, National Identification Authority three days ago confirmed that those in that kind of situation, there is no need to panic. And that when we come or when they come to your country to do the registration there, the slip that was given to you, when you give it to the registration officer, they will be able to key in your number, your, 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 your reference number in, and then they will be able to produce or get you your Ghana card, which you applied originally in Accra. There won't be any need for you to rush to try and do another registration. But the one that you did for which you haven't gotten your card is still valid in the system and that you will be able to get your card. So for now, Mr. Ambassador, I will, I will stop here and then passport, passport. Are you mean for Captain Sane? And as once yes, in Ghana card, you can use your passport. Yes, can you Ghana card. Passport. Ah, right. Yes. Uh, I, I forgot to add that uh, with the Ghana card, your passport can also be a proof of your Ghanaian citizenship, which will qualify you to yeah. register uh, for, for, for that. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Honorable, and thank you, His Excellency Papa Usankuma, for the information given to us this evening. Uh, we do appreciate your time. We do appreciate uh, that we, you are very sure you made the time to speak to us this evening on this important yes. issues. Uh, before I will allow our audience to ask questions, uh, can you please confirm to us uh, the name of the company that Ghana government is engaging to help the mission? In the acquisition of uh, the passport, because uh, my check on uh, on Company House uh, is giving me a few names that links to uh, Access Ghana. We've we've got access uh, access to Citizens UK Limited, access yeah. to Citizens yeah. Services Ghana. UK Limited, access Direct Ghana. Access Ghana access Limited. So access. can you please confirm the Ghana. Ghana. name yeah. that is registered in the UK? Okay, uh, the company is a Ghanaian company registered in Ghana. Right, it's called Access Citizens Ghana Limited. Okay, Access Citizens. Access, Access Citizens, Citizens Ghana. Ghana Limited. Access Citizens Ghana. Ghana Services. Ghana Limited. Access Citizens Services. Services Ghana Limited. The Access also has the. Uh, it's a bit of a conglomerate. Yes, I think so. It is a conglomerate, and they, they are also into other countries mm. doing these kind of similar services. Yes. yes, and in Ghana, the offices are at Independent Avenue. Okay. Um, okay. That is the company. As a citizens, uh, services Ghana, Ghana Limited. As a I, 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 there was something that I forgot. So permit me to bring that in on the issue of visas. Currently, the visa that we issue in Ghana is a, a handwritten sticker. Now, when we issue you that visa, there is no system that the visa is found in for which our immigration officers are able to verify or trace it. So it is only when you get to Ghana that the immigration officer will be able to check on the applicant or the holder of that particular visa. 
It has been a problem visa for us over the years. It has led to abuse. It has led to more practices. It has led to so many infractions and government has lost a lot of revenue. Government has looked at it and the government is about to roll out a new visa called machine readable uh, visa. We shorten it and we call it U visa. For the U visa, when it is issued to you in the UK, your details and everything gets into the immigration system. For which in Ghana, you can instantly no group of women who has been issued the visa is. Your history and the information that you have given us when you apply for the visa. And if, for example, there is any need for the intelligence services to do some work on you, they are able and capable of doing it. So it is something that is going to help the country. And this new type of visa is ICAO compliant or the International Civil Aviation Organization Authority has agreed that it is one of the top type of visas that we need to be using. In the past, all kinds of people have come to Ghana with all kinds of visas. So sometimes in Ghana, you hear people say that our visa is a Kukuyam uh, 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 visa because you can sit anywhere. Uh, smart people, uh, criminals, and all the like have managed to imitate the type of visa because it's a sticker that they write on it with, the, with pen and then they sign and then they put it in your passport. Nobody in Ghana, nobody in this world knows about that particular sticker or visa that has been given to you. It is only that passport that you can get that kind of information or unless physically, the application form that you fill, if it is in uh, London, they lay hands on that form itself before they know your details. It wasn't user-friendly, it wasn't productive, uh, and it wasn't business-like. But with this new machine-readable visa, which quite a number of uh, countries are now using, the moment you complete and apply for the visa, before your visa is issued, your details go into our immigration system. And then even uh, the, uh, our immigration officer or consular officer in New York can access the visa that you have applied in London. So our immigration officers in Ghana will also be able to look at it. The moment you get to Ghana, they take your passport, they scan it, and all your details come up. Just like when we travel those of us who use uh, Ghana passport. When we travel to come to the UK, you get to the immigration desk, they take your passport, they stamp, they scan it, they have all your information in front of them. Uh, sometimes if you are not lucky and you are a pedophile or you, you belong to the uh, plus, plus, plus group, it will, it, will, it will easily show up on the screen. So that is where now we are moving. We have gotten so close to starting it from the 1st of September. The company that uh, won the bid, we went through a, a, a competitive bidding. There were German companies, French companies, Spanish companies, Swiss companies, and some and their local partners. Now a Swiss company, a reputable Swiss company that was uh, incorporated in Switzerland in the 15th century. They are the company that prints the Swiss currency. So they are the Swiss state security printing company. They won the, the bid. And they are the ones that the ministry and the government of Ghana have been working with. Uh, somewhere in the middle of last month, they were in Ghana finally to install the hardware and the machinery for the process to begin. They have installed one at immigration and one at airport for visa arrivals and the rest. Now, as we speak, we have divided the whole, uh, 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 the whole world where our missions are into what we call five big missions and the rest. The five big missions are 
six big missions. We have London, we have Berlin, we have uh, Washington, we have New York, we have <laughs> The Hague and uh, Pretoria. So these missions constitute, when it comes to volume of visas <laughs> issued, they constitute 70%. So we call them the big missions. Now, this company called the OFS or Ora Fusli, uh, they are, as we speak, they are in London to install the London hardware system. Hopefully, uh, by, the, by Monday, they would have finished <coughs> the London and trained the staff, and then they will move on to Berlin to install the Berlin one. The plan even is that since London uh, is uh, claiming to be the 17th region of, uh, of Ghana, and therefore they always need to be given priority and be recognized at, that as number one. For the 17th title, I think uh, on behalf of my minister, not on behalf of the minister for local government, who has said, <laughs> we are granting it. Yeah? <laughs> so we are hoping that when London is done, it's possible that we might want London to start to the issuance of the uh, of the, uh, the, the, the machine readable visas, whilst we move on to do uh, the others as and when they come on board. So whatever be the case, by the end of the year, every mission, Ghana mission will be issuing a, a machine readable uh, visa, and London are the number one mission. Uh, hopefully, by 1st of September, they should be up and running, and the others will follow. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable, for the additional information on the uh, machine re readable visas that the, uh, our missions are going to provide to us. Um, and before I will ask our audience to ask their questions. Finally, uh, can you please confirm to us if this um, company, Access Citizen Services Ghana Limited, is registered in the UK? Um, because um, few people are showing concern about, they, they trust our missions, but they are not quite sure about their personal details uh, to a third party. <laughs> yes. If this company is registered in the UK, then we are sure that they will abide by data protection. Is it <laughs> Registered in oh, the um, Thank you very much. I will ask uh, my director legal who is here with me since the arena that you are taking me to as uh, some legal. <laughs> yes, director. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Deputy Minister and um, High Commissioner. Yes, um, now this is a very relevant um, question. I think. Um, matters of information and how they are preserved or uh, can be retrieved are uh, extremely important. Now, um, the contract that has been executed between the ministry and this company, the issues of data protection were dealt with extensively under the contract. In terms of our own law, which is very, very, very stringent and protective of personal information, how data can be shared or um, um, retrieved uh, and, and so on. So um, yes, we have done well to put in place all the legal uh, regulatory works framework that will, or that should be able to protect the data, personal data of applicants. And I'm sure if there was going to be a breach and that was brought to our attention and that was, uh, the company was going to was found to be liable. That is a ground even for termination, um, and that will not uh, exclude whether legal actions can be taken. In addition, so and and given that they have this track record, please remember that um, honourable deputy minister when he was speaking, he talked about the fact that this company was already in the business of doing this type of work, which invariably includes collecting people's data, storing the data, and using the data. And uh, given that they, up to this point, have shown that they have largely been in compliance with their various agreements with other um, institutions, we want to believe that, yes, 
um, they will live by their obligations under the contract. But rest assured that we don't sign these contracts and go to sleep. Mm. Um, we, we, they are monitored. And I know that uh, in our Ghanaian community diaspora, one of the very, very, very alert and highly, you know, and uh, uh, this one is the, the Ghanaian community in the UK. And, and they know, and you have people in various professions who know, for instance, that their data is being shared wrongly or being used for purposes for which the contract doesn't allow the company. And surely they will trigger those matters and actions to our attention, to the High Commission or to the Ministry. Uh, and, and then we will take the actions. But I want to assure you that indeed, yes, um, everything. So if you go to the contract, you see data protection provisions. Uh, and how they can use that. Um, uh, so, uh, thank you very much. This is the assurance I can give you. Thank you, Council. Uh, I didn't get any answer on whether the company has been registered in the UK or no. I know you said it's registered in Ghana. Yes. What about in the UK? Well, um, we will ask, but I would surmise that it would be difficult for them to operate here if they were not registered. Mm. Um, in Ghana, under our laws, that a company of the stature of access citizens services, that they would be operating without having been incorporated lawfully would be in fact a violation of the law. Uh, and I would think that in fact in the UK, you know in the UK more than me, they are even a lot more you know, strict with matters of this nature. In Ghana, you can still hide somewhat oh. and beat the system. So without stating that, as a matter of fact, that I know that they have registered, I can only state for the fact that they are registered in Ghana. But I want to believe that it would be practically impossible for them to come and operate in the UK, especially from the space that they are occupying, which is an open space and available to any person. Mm -hmm. Without actually being in compliance with the UK law, uh, but I will call. I will call the people just for purposes, mm -hmm. and right. then we'll make that available to the High Commission. Yeah, but I will think so. Yeah, Thank from you. from from Company House Access Services UK Limited was incorporated on twenty second March, twenty twenty two. But I wasn't <laughs> sure of the name. So that would be very good. So if there are services, yeah, then that would be the same company. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't Thank sure of the name. That's why I wanted to confirm. Sure, Thank you sure. very much. I'll take a quick break. When I come back, I will let our audience also come in with their questions. Thank you very much for your time. Producer, a quick break. Mamma mia, mamma mia, Italy, Namasa Deneco, God willing, 13th of August, Ghana Party in the Park, Italy, Ghana Beyond, family, about our life, a very trust from the spirit, trust every issue. I feel say now I die now I see you. My name is DJ DJ Tan. You be say be shout out DJ Kobe. Trust, gratia. Oh, hello. I was here for Ephraim Kalimbos. We have a new year. The only boss with one S. So the good news is very simple. Now it's top top send Ghana Music Awards USA. Of course, official headliner sponsor for the Ghana Music Awards USA. So it's happening on the 20th of August, yes, inside the Lincoln Theatre, Columbus, Ohio. A bit the Buddha. Tap Tap said Ghana Music Awards USA. <laughs> The Tap Tap Sam Ghana Music Awards 2022. The Music Mat. At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. 
We also understand that you want to avoid a double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you're not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed. Yo, Abu Shafo, Eda Mwase, Yamamu Nyina Akwa, Babiemu, Eba, Aye, OT Media TV, live on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media platforms. Midi, Eni, Nana Kwame, Oseitu, Yene, Yen, Papa, Aye, the High Commissioner to UK and Ghana High Commissioner to UK and Ireland, His Excellency Papa Osu Ankuma, and also uh, our Honorable Deputy Minister, also MP for Asante Mampong, with us this evening with, with their team helping us with all the necessary information that we need regarding our Ghana card, um, passport visas, and all other issues that we need to know about uh, them. I will go straight to our audience and pick a few questions and I will limit uh, each person to one question so that uh, others will also have the opportunity to ask questions. One question each. Uh, let me start from James. James, unmute yourself and ask your question. And please tell us where you have joined us from. James, Yetio. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, calling from uh, uh, Coventry. Uh, well, West Midlands. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would like to commend uh, His Excellency for the good work that he's done in terms of uh, uh, passport acquisition and uh, uh, visa issuance. And I know some people will disagree with me, uh, but if we see the last six or seven years, the passport uh, uh, application process and visa issuance has improved a lot. So thank you very much for the good work that you're doing. My question is, um, when I go to access to, to uh, have my bio data taken, where wow. is the data kept? Does the data go to Ghana High Commission directly or is kept by access and transferred to Ghana High Commission? Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, let me add two more questions to it, then Honorable and Papa will an answer them for us. Let's go to Ken. Ken, commit yourself and ask your question. Well, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Ken Colin for uh, Cardiff. Yeah, I want to take the opportunity once again to tap, thank Tap Tap Send for organizing such a program. But mine is in two folds. It's on renewal of passports. I want to know why do you have to produce a witness if you are renewing a passport and also if you are with a Ghana card? And the other is, I'm thinking that instead of having access or a premium service in London, which is perfect, I was thinking that we have satellite offices, probably in the Midlands or somewhere in the North. But having only a premium service in London adds to the chaos. Everybody has to travel to London to secure a passport or to go in for a visa. So I'm thinking a satellite office outside London would have been better than or adding a satellite office to the premium service would have been preferably better than having just a premium service in London. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Ken is having two questions. Let me add last one to it, then uh, we take the answers. Uh, JMJ Apartments. JMJ Apartments. Please okay. unmute yourself and ask Yo, uh, Open your middle, see you uh, my question is, um, when the minister, deputy minister was making the presentation, he made reference to UK, say UK war intermediary. Could he be able to mention a company that is an intermediary to secure a British passport? I know, say UK, I mean, I don't know if there's inter any intermediary, we don't have it. And then the last, the last question is, can they also compare Ghana passport? How the, the, I mean, how much is Ghana passport and British passport? Is it not embarrassing for British passport to be 70 pounds and then Ghana passport to be to, to obtain a Ghana passport in UK to be 200 and something pounds? Is it not embarrassing to us? Ken, please. Okay. Uh, uh, J, J, um, when was the last time you renew your passport? <laughs> 
J M J Apartment. Uh, when was the last time you attended uh, uh, Ghana High Commission for a service uh, in terms of renew or acquiring a passport? If you can answer me that question. Oh, you mean Ghana passport? Yeah. When was the last time you acquired one? I think when it was when they reduced it five years, I went for it. Uh, I went to Highgate when it was five years. Five okay. years. But, then, but the, the then current for your one information, of hold on, hold on, hold on. For your, for your information, Ghana passport mm -hmm. now has been extended to 10 years and it's 100 pounds, not 200. But I'll allow them to answer the questions. Yeah, yeah, much. thank you. Papa and Honorable, take the floor for us. <laughs> The data to be kept. The data is uh, why is it kept? Yes, I, I believe I see. Okay, passport officer. That's why the data. The data, the data is for the Ghana High Commission. The access media doesn't own the data. It transmits it straight to the Ghana High Commission. Right. So, in terms of data storage, it is the mission's responsibility. That I can tell you. Okay, on the issue of uh, the premium center only in London, I think I just I forgot in my presentation. Access company intends that when they start, they will be doing operations in other parts of, uh, of UK. And that when they find out that there is the need for a satellite office to be open in other parts of UK, they, they will do that. That they have given us that undertaking. And at the end of the day, it is in their own interest to be able to capture as many business as possible. So there is no way they will be sitting only in London. They will want to spread their wings and tentacles throughout uh, the UK and Ireland, where they have a contract to operate. And therefore, it will, be, it will be good business for them to have maybe a satellite office, open whatever number of days they found suitable, in order to capture business for themselves. So they have given us that undertaking. So uh, the access offices uh, will be all over the place. And like I said, because they are serious in business, they intend even opening on some on Saturdays and even on some holidays, just to make sure that, again, they are able to capture a lot of Ghanaians into their fold. Yes. The other one. He said that they why intermediary. They don't have company. intermediary when it comes to passport. Yes, that's true. We don't have intermediary. I, I think uh, the question was whether the UK has a, an intermediary company dealing <coughs> with passports. Well, for that I cannot say. However. For purposes of the issue of passports, the Ghana government has decided that access will be an intermediary for providing premium service as it is in Ghana. Because in Ghana, we have this premium service being provided by v VFS. And this work. Perfect. And as the deputy, honorable deputy minister said, the clients are very much satisfied with the work that is doing. And that is what has influenced government to also get that service for passports to the United Kingdom. But I know that in Ghana, when you are going for a visa, you don't go to the British High Commission. You go to VFS. That much I know. But I also think that in the case of the Ghana passport, 
I believe it is one of the few countries that issue passports to its citizens almost in every mission. I mean, in, in our mission here, <laughs> the passports that uh, they enroll about a hundred a day. Just, just uh, from Monday, I instructed that it be increased to 150. As I speak, there is a team in Manchester and those who have applied for Ghana passports, the number is, I think, 220. No, 290. 290, ah, you see. So we have made it easier to acquire Ghana passports in other parts of the world. I don't know whether in the UK they would issue a passport to a UK citizen in Ghana. They may say that they will bring everything to the UK. In one case, I remember someone was told that because he had not renewed his passport for a very long time, he has to personally come to the UK to have the passport uh, issued. Yeah, His Excellency, thank you. But my concern was, why do you have to produce a witness if you are renewing a passport? You are renewing a passport. No, you just sign. I mean, you need guarantees. A witness to sign your signature. Yes. Why? Why don't you need a witness? Because you already, need... already, you already have my details in the system, and it is, uh, I, you, you have it. So I don't see the reason I should come with a witness to sign for me before it is renewed. Because you'll be issued with a new booklet. All right. No, so the, sorry, is the booklet issued on the basis of verifying my data? Don't the, confuse, don't confuse the Ghana card. With I'm not passport. talking of Ghana card, please. I'm talking of renewal of passports. And I'm saying that I know that you don't need to come to the mission with a witness. You have. To, you I'm, I'm asking why I didn't say you have to come with a witness. I said why do you have to produce a witness, meaning some, letting somebody sign. Before it, oh, because, I see. Okay. Well, that is our system. Somebody should yeah. that is our system. Because I, I'm no. asking and that stuff. because I think and that as far as I have my the system. The, 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 so the, I think the the fundamental issue is that under the passport and travel certificates decree, uh, there's something that is said about guarantees. Uh, and that is why each time we will require that the guarantees will have to sign. And one of the things that I said about the guarantor is that in the event that your repatriation from the country I'm in which sorry, you are, I said witness. I witness. didn't say guarantor. Uh, oh. What I can tell you is that what I can tell you is that the witness, the witness, I mean, the person witnesses your signature. Yeah. Then you might as well say that if you are renewing your passport, you don't even need to sign anything. Yes, because you have your details. No, once you sign somebody should verify that you are the person signing and applying for the renewal. And that person may be different from the person who witnessed your signature the first time. Or you may well, have Ken, agree Ken, 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 I think, I think this is very clear. Let's move oh, yes. on. So you Let's don't move need on. someone to sign because there are electronic signatures now that people can use. And so if you're always asking people to use a wet ink, then it means that we are trying to hold on to the old ways, and which is also holding up the passport system. So can you improve? I think what that is- what uh, We will doing. try to improve, but I doubt, I doubt the if- the wife We don't accept the electronic the signature. Wife. No country does. No right. country uh, accepts no electronic signature. Because some please, of them please. work for the government and please, most other applications. Please, 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 please. I'm saying that <laughs> you sign by yourself. You sign. We don't accept electronic signatures. Nobody. I've just applied for a better. Unless, of course, you sign a passport or you've applied for a Ghana visa and you've been able to successfully use an electronic signature. We don't have electronic signatures. I'm not saying Ghana does, but I'm saying that there's so many applications here today 
I'm well, sorry to interrupt. And people don't want to have this electronic signature. But, and it is but when business. you are carrying passport everywhere, you need a witness. Yes. Yeah, so why should I be? I don't to... think we do that. Your husband well, 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 yeah, is in the UK. You need someone to verify your picture. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Just let me say that. Look, everything that we do as a country is done according to law. I would assume that the laws are different in other jurisdictions. Yeah. We may not have gotten to the situation where we think we ought to amend our law okay. to the same law as may exist in the US or in the UK. But practices too are different. Because in the, my son applied for a U, U.S. visa. He was given a date in March 2023. He was given a date in March 2023. It's never going to happen in Ghana, where someone applies for a Ghanaian a Ghana visa. He will be given an appointment even uh, two, two or three weeks. So we are operating in a different system, all right? But please, that doesn't also mean that our system is not good. We know that there are advances in technology, and technology is far more advanced when it comes to its application in the developed world than ours. But in some places too, we are ahead, because after all, tap, tap, you send mobile money. You can send mobile uh, money by phone from any country to the UK. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. And please, 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 um, let me plead with all of us. Let's reduce the interaction so that we can move on very smoothly. Thank you very much. Um, let's take KOB and Messi. KOB first. Or meet yourself. And ask your question. Okay. Good, good evening, Your Excellency. Uh, thanks very much for your submission. Uh, um, I just have a few concerns regarding access and the contracts which you've been you've actually signed with them. Uh, first of all, I think that the you talked about a, a, a fee, a percentage fee being paid to the Ghana government, which hasn't been really disclosed. Uh, to the audience, and also from what the, the, the legal person is saying, I don't think enough due diligence has been done on this company. Uh, have had a look at their their information on companies uh, house, and it's a relatively new company. So for that for that company to to handle the the data of Ghanaian citizens, uh, I think the, the due diligence should be much stringent. And I I don't I don't perceive it. It's, I think there are so many assumptions and like. Uh, from from the, from the submissions, like oh yeah, we believe it's been registered. We believe it's been that. So I think, Your Excellency, you might need to look into that. So the, uh, if the due diligence is not done, maybe it can be revisited. Uh, and permit me, Mr. Oti, just to add one final question, and I <laughs> if you, and that has to do with the cost of the Ghanaian passport. Uh, I think it's still a bit uh, uh, extortionate. Uh, for a hundred pounds for a 32 uh, page document and I know this I know normally these uh, uh, these prizes are set in in, in regards to or, or in conjunction with the Ghanaian Parliament so I think probably what you can do for us your Excellency is to try and tailor a bill back to the Ghanaian Parliament to say please can you reduce the the, the, the prizes or the passports a bit further for us because I think a hundred pounds and 165 pounds for a 32 and a 48 pound uh, 48 page uh, password is a bit uh, 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 a bit of the high side so I, that's what I plead with you uh, for the sake of time I'll leave it here and if any, there's anything I'll, I'll communicate with you directly at the high commission thank you very much sir thank you KOB and I'll again plead with all our audience can we please limit it to one question because I mean it will not be fair to others uh, who are also on the call uh, and will also want to ask questions for them not to get the chance to ask questions if we are all going to ask three questions. I, I, I do understand, but please let's try our best so that others can also have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, let me move to Mercy and we will take the answers. And Mercy, please unmute yourself and uh, bring your question. 
Yeah, good evening. Oh, good thank evening, you Mercy. for this platform. Um, I'm Mercy. Um, I'm, I'm I'm planning to go to Ghana next month, and my visa. I I want a visa for me and my child. And with my child, the dad wasn't here when I gave birth to her, and the birth said the dad they didn't allow during the registration they didn't allow me to put the dad's name because they wanted him to sign so it's blank but when i wanted to ask for the visa they are asking me to bring two passports of parents but there's no father on the birth set is it going to affect me or something if in any case if um I'm applying for the visa. All right, let me add Gina to it. Gina, uh, omit yourself and ask your question. Gina, it's you. iPhone, Gina, omit yourself and ask your question, please. All right, I think said Gina, da. Yemfa, user, user iPhone, user iPhone, omit yourself, not for a question, bro. Is it me? Yes. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Okay. My question here is, uh, I will plead with the Ghana High Commissioner and the Honorable, uh, I don't know, his position in a way. But then, uh, I think this meeting is getting a bit heated. But I will plead that they have patience because uh, the purpose of this meeting is to just seek advice, like people's opinions and everything, so they mm -hmm. can rectify any mistakes or improve on the services that they're rendering for us. So if they, they're going the way they're going, it's, it's just not going to work. I'm just pleading with them. Because what the boy was trying to ask needed clarification for him to come around that this is how we do it but the way they're presenting but, uh, the case wait, wait, sorry which which boy and what uh, are you the brother to? that was asking about uh the witness. witnesses and all those things my, my dear sister the, my dear sister yes. uh, let me let me come in here you and me know in the uk even a okay child, even a child if yes you get a child passport they request for you to bring witnesses but is it not what my you host, do here? I do understand. I do understand. But what I'm saying is, you are doing a good job. You provided a platform for people to add their opinions about their grievances or like on things that they're not satisfied with. And mm -hmm. from the beginning of this meeting, they themselves said that there's uh, videos going around in most countries. Yeah. Yeah. For every rumors or for every claims, there is an iota of truth. Let's 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 stay let's stay on the witness issue. If you have any other question, you have the opportunity. No, to no, no. I'm, I've been with the program from the beginning. This yeah, is so, what we do because we, yeah. we're not getting anywhere with this. Because if you don't give people chance to bring out what is bothering them and always being cut off. I don't think it, it will make any we, difference. We haven't cut anyone off. The question that he asked about witnesses, they've responded. And I'm, you are bringing it up again. And I'm I am not bringing that up. My, my host, you yourself know because you... Right. Um, I think uh, she's off now. So let's take the two questions that came earlier on. Um, Honorable. Well, uh, OT, uh, please, if we appeared to be intolerant, we apologize. Oh, I think the line has freeze again. So, Mr. Producer, can we go for one ad break? If the birth okay. certificate states that there is no father, nobody's going to ask you about the father. 
But if the birth certificate of the child shows that there's a father mm. who will ask you to get evidence mm. of the father's consent. Mm. And I am saying this because and we are now very particular because there have been several cases mm. where we have been summoned as an embassy to court here in child custody cases to come and prove that a child was sent out of the jurisdiction and was given a passport or a visa had the consent of both parents. There was even one occasion when someone alleged that he never deposed to any affidavit or declaration to the fact that he had consented to the child obtaining a visa. And the court wanted to see it, whether it was forged. But of course, uh, we are not compelable as a mission to appear before a British court because of our immunity. So these things, we try to do it so that we don't fall foul of the laws of the United Kingdom. As regards, I, I don't know, that's what you say. Uh, so it means that in the UK, you can register the birth of a child even without the name of a mother. I see. No, I mean, from what she's father. saying. No, he said that it's, there's no father. So it means that it can also be only the father and not the mother. Yes. But what I'm saying is that we look at the birth certificate and if the person applying is neither the father nor the mother or the person named in the certificate, we say that we want to have uh, something to signify the consent of the parent. I'll leave the due diligence to yeah. the Honorable Deputy Minister. Thank you. Okay. Um, on the issue, uh, one of the uh, persons who came online said, the company is relatively new. Um, I don't know whether he had listened to what we presented from the beginning. We said this company is, has been operating in so many other countries. They are in existence in Ghana. It's the first time they are coming to do this kind of work in the UK. So obviously, since they are coming to do this business in the UK, they will have to register a company in the UK. Mm. Now they have registered a company in the UK. But I said to you that this is a Ghanaian registered company owned by Ghanaians 100%. So they already exist in Ghana, where we are coming from. For them to come here, they have come to also register the company here. And then they are registered in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, in Lebanon, in Portugal, in South Africa. And they are operating in all these countries and they are providing a similar service. So the company we are bringing in is not a fly by night company. We are making sure that we know our people talk, our people want the best. So let's go in for a good company who has a track record. And I also did mention that in Ghana, as at the time that we engage them, there are two companies that have been providing this kind of services or working in the industry, VFS and, uh, and Access. VFS, we have already given them business. And then Access came on board and we look at the services they are providing externally. And then we decided that, okay, we will uh, 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 do the business with Access who have shown their presence, uh, uh, they are multinational, more or less. And then they have their Ghana operation. So it's not that we did not do due diligence. It's not that it's a new company. If they decide, for example, to go and operate maybe in America, they will have to register there, even though they've been doing the business maybe for so many years. VFS has been in existence for so many years. But it's not in every country that they operate. Now, if they decide to go to a country where they don't operate, they will have to open it there. So when you go to their, their company house, 
you might see them as a, 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 a new company, but maybe they have a track record in the industry for God knows how long. So please, we we'll have to look at it also from that angle. And therefore saying that we have not done enough due diligence, please. Um, sometimes you also have to give us some credit. Awesome. It's not that in Ghana or at the ministry, we don't know what we are doing. We go through the processes, we cross the T's, we dot the I's, and all these kind of things, it goes to attorney general. For attorney general to have a look at the draft contract and whatever, and to give us uh, directions and clearance before finally these things come out. So sometimes a little bit, uh, a bit below the belt. When I've been gone through all this, and then you are told that uh, you, don't, you didn't do enough due diligence. Maybe I think the, 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 the questioner probably we should have asked, what due diligence did you do? But not to draw the conclusion that we did not do enough due diligence, which means you probably have the facts that we have been negligent. Sorry, you, you're getting me wrong in this, in this in, in instance. I'm saying from, your, from, from the way you came across, it was perceived as if enough due diligence was not done on this company. Because when the question was asked to the director or legal person, he didn't even know whether the company was registered or not. So, I, I mean, I think you're being a bit defensive. We are, we are all trying to, to come, uh, learn and gain information. Point is noted. Please, please. All right. I, Thank you very I, much, KOB. Okay, um, point taken. Yeah. Right. Can we move on? Uh, I, we, yeah. I, think, I, think I know. I know there are other people on this call who yeah. also <laughs> have issues. The only boss with one S. Happy New Month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Oh, do you know why life has been made so? Mr. Producer, sorry uh, for that ad break. Um, I, I know that there are other people on this call who are also having issues with their tap tap send app and uh, would like to have some kind of assistance. Yes, we've got our customer service team uh, on call and they are happy to assist you if you have any issue or anything with, with regards to your tap tap send app. I'm going to open breakout room one. Um, breakout room one, you will meet Teresa, A class, Nelson, Daniel, Kofi uh, over there, and they will be able to assist you if you have any issue with regards to your tap tap send app. So now, uh, breakout room one is open. If you have any issue with regards to your tap tap send app, uh, you see a pop up on your screen. Just join breakout room one, and they will be able to assist you with your tap tap send uh, issues. Um, let me go on to uh, the chat room and pick a few questions as well. Uh, Richard, is it Richard a Japan? Richard, omit yourself. Now for a question, bro. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Richard, uh, calling from Bedford. My question is actually not related to what we discussed today, but uh, can, we, can we please limit to what we are discussing today? If it's regards to tap tap send. Please go to breakout room one and they'll be able to help you with your question with regards to tap tap send due to time, please. It's not related to tap tap. It's yeah, not it's about not tap tap and it's not it's about not the topic related. that we are talking about. Well, it's basically, I mean, I'm glad, I mean, I'm happy that we have the um, <clears throat> the deputy minister there, I mean, with us. So I wanted to ask something about what's happening in Kutuka. You know, basically, that's what that's what to us. If it's okay, if not, can we please limit to what we are discussing today so that we don't deviate what, uh, from what we are talking about? Well, it's related to the, I mean, the the ministry, isn't it? All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I mean, most of us have traveled to Ghana, and then I, I, my worry basically is what's happening at the airport. Um. There is this embarrassment happening there where you have people asking you blindly for money. That is what I wanted to talk about. You see, I'm glad, I mean, we all used up. I've got evidence of someone that collected money for me, and this person had the audacity to even ask me to do a mobile money transfer to him. I've got the details here, so if you're interested, I can send that to you. And, I, you know, we can have the record and everything. 
I want to understand why we embarrass ourselves this way. You know, you're trying to come here. Yes, somebody might have, you know, done something wrong. You don't need to demand money from them. And for that particular officer at the airport to have the audacity to, you know, to even give his mobile details for someone to use to transfer money in before he can, you know, declare something he thought was illegal for, you know, for me to bring it. And like I said, it's of the topic that you're discussing now, but if you are interested, I have the details of this particular officer. It's on my tap tap because the money that was sent to him was done on tap tap, so his details and everything is there. If they if they're interested in following up, I can okay. give it to them. Rich, I think your your point is well noted, and uh, maybe we will allow Minister to react to that. Uh, let's move on to Isaac. Yeah, thank you, NOT. Um, I just want to ask uh, a question regarding the Ghana card. I think uh, given the, uh, the narrative of the Ghana card, the process was not extensive to understand exactly what requires one to, you know, be able to acquire the Ghana card uh, in terms of price and in other things. Can the minister, you know, help us to understand much more about that? Thank you very much, Isaac. Um, let me add Franco Usu, a champion to it, then I'll ask the minister to react to those questions. Franco Usu, a champion, meet yourself and bring your question. Um, thank you and good evening to the panelists. Um, I just want to um, ask a question. Mm -hmm. Now, from what has been discussed so far, we've talked about visa, we've talked about um, a premium service, we've talked about e-visas, which are wonderful. But I just want to know whether as a nation, we have done an impact assessment on visa-free travel to Ghana and how that could impact tourism. I'm very much aware of Singapore being a country that is visa-free. And as a result of that particular initiative, Singapore receives about 300% more tourists to their country than their population. The impact of this on their economy is just monumental, especially tourism. And in Ghana, do we have any plans in future to make our country visa-free? What we should also bear in mind that this cost of living has come, has come to stay, high cost of living has come to stay. It impacts on people that have got family, like us that have, I have four children, to travel to Ghana, to go and take visa and other things. It, it, it just makes the traveling to Ghana too expensive. And so I think going forward as a nation, we should be able to come to that place of asking ourselves, do we need, to, why can't we make it visa free for people, more people to come in and probably positively impact our tourism? Thank you. Thank you, Frank, for your question. Uh, I think I will ask Honorable to um, react to these questions for us, please. The last, Frank, if you're a Ghanaian, you don't need a visa to travel to mm, Ghana. Exactly. If you are a non-Ghanaian, you will need a visa to travel to Ghana. Visa-free regime. Only a few countries in this world have visa-free regime. In Ghana, if you are an African, you bear the passport of an African country, generally, you don't need a visa to travel to Ghana. So uh, that is it. And in some situations, I remember when we had this uh, year of return, there was a visa on arrival scheme. You get a visa when you get to Ghana, but that also means that you may not even be accepted. So I agree, uh, travel is expensive. But these things sometimes are done on a reciprocal basis. We are talking about Singapore. I know that there are some countries, if you have a UK passport, you don't need a visa. But if a Ghanaian is going to Singapore, he needs a visa. He can't just enter. So these things vary from country. Country to country. Yes. And we have we have 
visa free agreement with about 31 countries. It's unfortunate that UK is not one because UK is not prepared to sign a visa free agreement with Ghana. And we want to insist that, oh, any Ghanaian entry, including diplomats, entering the UK must have a visa. And so we also insist that they should have a visa when they are coming to our country. And this question about, uh, I think the last set of questions, someone said the passport was too expensive. Yes, when I assumed, assumed duty in 2017, yes, a lot of concern was expressed. And I know that either last year or two years, it was reduced. The yes. price was reduced. Yes. Two years ago, it was reduced. So 100 pounds, it has been reduced. I don't know. Well, we'll convey, we'll convey the sentiment to parliament and then parliament will also consider whether then they should reduce it further. I'll leave uh, yes, the rest to the minister. The other one is the Ghana card. He wanted the requirements. Yes. But uh, 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 I think we have said uh, the requirements, all you need, all you need to be able to register when they come here is to produce your passport, your birth certificate, or your baptismal certificate, or in the absence of any of these, you need to get a relative who will come and vouch for you in the form of an affidavit. <coughs> and that affidavit in the UK here can be sworn in by the Honorable uh, uh, High Commissioner. And then once that is done, you are good to go to go through your registration process. It is not that difficult. And then, and, and then, and then the court. I know, I asked for the court. No, is there any court involved? You don't know. Okay. Okay. So, sorry? It's You're asking the cost. Is it going to be free? Or no, no, it's, it is free. Ghana card is free. Going for Ghana card is free. The only okay. time that you have to pay is if, if, you, if you lose your card. If you are in, what are you in for? Uh, I know that we are in the process. The authorities from the National Identification Authority will be coming to train us, the officers here. So before we commence, uh, the, the, the High Commission itself will embark on such a program and let us know the details and everything. And it will be published on the website, on the website of the Ghana High Commission to assist all of us. Minister, you may continue, you may resume. So, uh, well, thank you for, for coming in. Uh, there's one question that somebody said about corruption at the airport. That is a difficult one. Difficult one in the sense that government don't condone corruption. Government at the airport consistently announcement are made that you should not pay money to anybody for any services that are being provided at the airport. Now, in this world, as it is known, where 12 people meet, there is definitely one who is a Judas. <laughs> so you definitely have people at the airport, in spite of the announcement that is being made, they will try something. So it's a bit difficult when somebody allows himself or herself to be uh, prey on by uh, somebody at the airport that uh, pay money or something of that sort. But I was very, very interested since the gentleman said he has evidence. I'll be very, very interested if after the show, um, he can supply me with those details because I want to pursue it. Yeah, definitely. We are interested to make sure that we that, need that, that, that will not be very difficult at all. Like I said, I have got it on file. It's saved under my WhatsApp. Uh, no, we, sorry, under my tablet. Rich, Rich, due to time. So get a uh, contact details. Uh, I know Ghana High Commission, they are in the chat room. Uh, GHC-C. Uh, 
send them a direct message and give your details to them. They will link you to the minister so that we can take it from there. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, uh, due to time, I know I know we have run out of our time. Uh, can I take two more sections of questions? Then we will bring this to a close, uh, so we can relieve them for them to go and have some rest. Sorry, can, can you put Can you put the, the details on the message message section? I'm driving, so I'll be able to pick it up later on. Yeah, no, what I'm the saying is, Ghana High Commission, they are... Yeah, the details. Can you put it on the message section? Yeah, can go report to the police. Driving, All right. Um, let's continue. Um, can I pay Boatin or, or meet yourself and bring your question? Boatin. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And also, <clears throat> I thank uh, TAPTA for making it possible. And I think... Uh, Occasionally, if we can have this opportunity, it will be very good. Yeah, what I want the commissioner, uh, this is a suggestion first, is that um, they said the Ghana card is going, to, is going to be free when it comes to UK. Uh, to me, I suggest that if it is free in Ghana, because those people living in Ghana pay their taxes over there, and some of them who are not even paying tax, they are, uh, what do you call it, pigeon farmers and everything, so they need it to be free. But those of us here, we don't pay taxes in Ghana. And as such, we should help our mother Ghana. By yes, paying that's a good idea. Nation. But my question is that uh, I had uh, my wife and my son are in Ghana at the moment uh, on holidays, and we struggled before we had a visa. In the first case, they said the IT was having, they were having problems with the IT. But there is one thing that um, bothers me, that when we, we, we had a, a, a legitimate address in Ghana, and yet we were made to uh, seek, uh, they were seeking for an invitation from Ghana before they can issue the visa to us. As for me, I've, uh, I've always been traveling with the Ghana passport though. But my, my wife and my son, uh, their passport got expired and very unfortunately we couldn't uh, renew it earlier in time. By the time they gave us, it will uh, surpass the time that they need to travel to Ghana. I don't see the reason why that we should, uh, we have a legitimate address in Ghana and yet they demand that we should let someone invite us before we can enter into Ghana. And on their forms, they ask us, why are you traveling to Ghana? And you say, for a family visit. We are visiting family there. We have our family there. We've written, we've, we've done, uh, we've uh, uh, provided the address and everything of our family members, and yet they want someone to invite us. I think uh, the commissioner, uh, the high commissioner, should see to it that maybe with this case they have to change it because even though we process British P, they knew that uh, we process the British P on conditional cases, but we are Ghanaians. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Alex, I'm being tempted to answer this question, but I'll leave it for them to answer. <laughs> All right, um, let me pick uh, two more questions. Jane, uh, Jane, um, can you please, Jane HQ, can you please unmute yourself and ask, uh, ask your question? Yes, hello, good evening all. Good evening. Um, yes, um, my question is in relation to the premium service. Yeah. Is there going to be a section of people in the Ghana High Commission dealing with um, the applications? Um, I know that the, the panel have been dismissive about the UK complaining, but I have personal experience of the delay um, with regards to getting visas. And those things were not, uh, it was not pleasant to see. Um, they don't acknowledge the visa. You know, you do everything online, no acknowledgement. You, you, you know, it is not fair on the people. I mean, to apply for a British passport, you do it online. They are constantly coming back to you. You have our mobile numbers. You have our email addresses. These are all free. It doesn't take a lot to say we acknowledge you. We received your application um, due to whatever. There's a problem with our internet service or there's a problem with our email. But when you call and you, you're on the chat room, the, 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 the staff just cut you off. 
they cut you off. And if there's a if there's a backlog, you know, they know that summertime is very busy. No <laughs> point in giving unrealistic time frames for people to say, oh, you know, uh, if an application for a visa to travel in July is done um, end of May, I would expect that the visa should be available before um, the person is about to travel in July. That was not what happened. It is constant back and forth, back and forth to the chat room with different excuses. One person is telling you that the um, the visa, um, the, you haven't received your application. And I don't understand the purpose of sending it by email to then send it, the paper form. I mean, surely it's just the page where the witnesses have signed, <laughs> which needs to be sent. But it seems to be very laborious dealing with the Ghana High Commission. I think that we have to try and update ourselves to make it very easy once the application is received acknowledge it and so my question is basically if we are going to say that we've got this premium service uh is there going to be a, a designated group of people at the high commission dealing with um the applications or is it going to be the same people dealing with it because clearly we either need to have more staff to deal with the the applications because there's no point in me paying 45 pounds on top of the application fee only to, to be in the same backlog as everybody else that's my thank question you. thank you thank you jane uh let me add uh Ketchid bonsu to it then i'll ask them to I respond to their questions. Hello, good evening. Good evening, uh, Thank you for giving me the chance. Um, please, my name is Tina. I'm calling from Birmingham, West Midlands. Hey, um, Tina, and I will sit catch the bunzi. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, go when ahead. the deputy minister was um, talking, he made mention of um, some of the countries that do accept the Ghana card to travel from their countries. Um, I would like to know, please, I have an expired Ghanaian passport and I also do have a Ghana card. Can I please use my Ghana card instead of my expired Ghana passport? And could he please kindly list some of the countries that accept the Ghana card as a travel document? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I will I'll, I'll allow the honorables to answer these three questions for us. And I'll take my last three set then. Well, well, th thank you very much. I mean, uh, once you are a foreigner entering Ghana and you apply for a visa, you have to comply with the requirements. You have opted to use a British passport. So you are a foreigner as far as we are concerned. Despite the fact that you may bear a Ghanaian name. So please, I will appeal to you when you want to travel conveniently to Ghana, get a Ghana passport. And please don't wait if you are traveling in a month and you apply for a Ghana passport. You may be delayed because there's always a quota. And as regards the visa going up and down, I'm sorry. Uh, I know at a point in time, we had a problem with our system. However, when you apply for a visa, you are given a date for your appointment after you've completed it. So there's no question of somebody acknowledging receipt of your application. If your application is successful, you get an appointment date. An appointment date. Mm -hmm. The appointment date may be, probably may go beyond a week or two, depending on the number of applicants at a particular time. But for instance, if you apply for a 24 hour visa, it's most unlikely that you will be given a date which is even uh, beyond a week. It is, you know, so we try our best. And uh, I know, well, I'll leave it to the minister, but premium service, it will not be operated by the Ghana High Commission. Ghana High Commission will just be a recipient of whatever documents that access citizen services gets from the applicants. And then we 
will deal with it. And after the necessary approvals, do what we have to do. That is what is called the back end. So the front end, and from the lady who says she doesn't want to go and come, go and come, probably, well, I know access, for instance, I've even said that it may get to a time they may even come to people's homes to take the applications if the people so desire for a fee, depending on how their business goes. So that uh, those of us who think that it's so inconvenient, even uh, filling these forms and so forth, if you pay for them, they can do it. But the Ghana High Commission will still be operating fully the system that it's operating now. Access is only an addition. And it will not be manned by the Ghana High Commission. Uh, and it's optional, you see, it's optional. I mean, you have a choice whether to go like in Ghana, people decide to go to VFS or something from their passport. They go there, sometimes they give them a cook, sometimes they get coffee, <laughs> they want cocoa, drink, they want photocopies and so forth. Well, and then it's a choice, but we believe that it's all geared towards improving our services to our clients. But I also encourage Ghanaians who hold British passports, you know, to try and get Ghana passports so that when they are going to Ghana, you don't need a visa. Yeah. I get worried when somebody says, yes, I'm going to my country, they say I should get invitation letter, but you are a foreigner. Thank you very much. Minister, please. Yep. The, the question uh, thank you, the... my dear. Um, I think the minister, uh, the, the, the High Commissioner has uh, done justice to the premium service one. So uh, with premium service, you will, do, you will get updates, you get SMS, you will get telephone numbers, to uh, telephone calls to let you know where your application has reached. And then when it is uh, your, 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 your visa or passport eventually is done, and you have asked for it, they can get it delivered to you by courier service. It is all part of the services that access is going to provide for which you'll be paid 45 pounds on top of your passport fees or on top of your visa fees. Ghana card. Yes, as I said, you can use your Ghana card as of now partially to travel from some countries to Ghana. UK, for example, and uh, the Netherlands are countries that uh, readily come to mind where Ghanaians have been able to travel with their Ghana card to, get, to pass through the immigration of these countries to Ghana. But like I said, let me emphasize, it's very, very important. On your return, you are going to need your passport which has the right of abode in it to be able to return back to these countries that I have mentioned. Um, and in the next week or two, we will give the High Commission countries that so far, uh, I know it's not only these two countries, more, we'll give them the list so that they can uh, upload it on, the, uh, on your website to guide the names. It's important, please. When you are going, you need to have your passport for your return. That side is very, very, very important. Well, people continue creating somewhere along the line. Even yesterday, when I was at Omega, after I finished, somebody cut a portion where, no, no, I think when we did it here the last time, the person cut just the portion where I said there has been a, a little bit of confusion about how you can use the Ghana card. And uh, <laughs> there was some media and public backlash that the Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, the Vice President were on opposite sides, right? <laughs> the person just cut that bit. And then it is all over the place. That's just like, I have uh, <laughs> condemned what the, yes, the Vice President said, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. We are all speaking the same language. The Ghana card eventually 
they are hoping it will become acceptable as a travel document. Based on bilateral agreement. Yes, for now we haven't gotten there. <laughs> for now, even though we are using it to travel from one country to Ghana, as I said, it is on a bilateral basis. We have started engaging various countries to allow our citizens to use Ghana card as a form of identification to travel from those countries to Ghana so that when they get to our immigration, they can use their Ghana card to show the immigration officer that they are Ghanaians and then there will be easy uh, entry into, into, into their country. That's a partial. Then on their return, they are going to need their passport. And because they are going to need their passport, that is what makes it partial for now. And I said, it is not all countries that as of today, we have managed to have this bilateral agreement. We cannot unilaterally decide that this is what we are doing. People will have problems. So the Minister of Foreign Affairs has been engaging some various countries along these lines. In fact, letters have gone to almost all the airlines that uh, operate from Ghana, that this is the situation. So that is the airline. But it is not the airline that allows you into the country. It is a particular country's immigration for which we need to engage the competent authorities. And this engagement is going on. For now, British allow, the Netherlands allow. The others I know in due course Will, will fall in line and then hopefully um, maybe we might be able to use it. But then to be able to use it, one needs to also make sure that if the Ghana card is going to be, there must be a, a visa in the Ghana card. We probably will have to get there. We haven't gotten there yet. Gradually, gradually we are growing. Now we have moved from, uh, we are no longer a touch pool. We are getting nearer to a uh, from. So we are getting there. So my dear sister, if you want to go to uh, Ghana, you can take your Ghana card to go to Ghana. But ideally, as a High Commissioner advice, please get a Ghana passport. It makes that easier for you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. I will take my last set of questions and I'm going to share a, a, a link uh, in the chat room. It's a Word document. Those who will not be able to get the opportunity to ask their question, they can put their question on the Word uh, Google document, and we will pass it on to Ghana High Commission. You can add your email to it, and they will definitely uh, respond to uh, your question. So I will take my last set of questions. But I'm gonna see. Yeah, there is a Google uh, link. Uh, you can put your questions on that uh, for us, and we will definitely pass it on to Ghana High Commission for them to come back. But please do well to add your email to it. Thank you very much. Uh, let me take Kunebi uh, Yadom. Kunebi Yadom, after Kunebi Yadom, Ernest. Mata, but you meet yourself for us, please. Mata. Kunebi Yadom, or meet yourself and bring your question. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. My question is that um, we were told during the passport when you are applying we know we have a you have guarantors we have witnesses but my what bothers me is that uh, still nigerians are holding ghana passports so with all this witness and guarantors how do they get ghana passport because i know personal i know a person who told me she was applying for the passport and then nigerian guy told her if she pay her 200 pounds, she can get it in three days. And it's very, very worried, so worrisome. So please, what are we doing to stop all those, please? Thank you. Thank you, Kunedu. Ernest, uh, I'll meet yourself and bring your question. Ernest. Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for being available to answer all these questions. Uh, first of all, it looks like this uh, forum is really centered on the UK in the direct, these UK, UK residents in the diaspora, uh, do you have any plans of for uh, coming to where I am, like France and other countries in Europe, to do the same program or this uh, Ghana card uh, that you are issuing for Ghanaian citizens over here? And the second question is, uh, 
do you really need to have a, uh, a Ghana card when you already have a Ghana passport? Can't you do everything with a Ghana passport the same as the Ghana card? That's my two questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. Uh, let me add RK and Esther. RK, I'll meet yourself. Not for a question, but more can you now? Please, you can go to the chat room. There's a link, a Word document link there. Uh, you can put all your questions, your contact uh, email, and I definitely know that Ghana High Commission will respond to your questions. Let's move thank on. You, RK. Okay. Uh, thank you once again for taking our questions. My question is that, can the High Commissioner confirm that um, if somebody has a Ghanaian passport, he can travel to Ghana with it and come back with his British passport? The reason I'm asking is that um, I've been going to Ghana frequently with my family of six and I called the High Commission some time ago, but the call center was not able to confirm categorically to me that if I have a Ghanaian passport, I can travel with it. And when I look at their website, some I think about some years back, it appears to read that you are not allowed to have two passports to, I mean, to travel to Ghana. So. I know it's a bit confusing here, and most Ghanaians, friends too, some of them take the visa because they are not 100% sure um, they're able to do so. So can he please confirm? I know he has mentioned it, so that at least I can have peace of mind, then I can actually get passport for all my four children. I have mine, as well as my spouse, so that we don't have to go through the visa thing um, again. Then my last question is that I know it's what okay. Okay, can you okay, please thank you. you too? Thank you very much. Uh, let's yeah. move on to Esther. Esther, omit yourself that our question, bro. Good evening, and um, my name is uh, my question is uh, myself and my children, our Ghana passport will be expiring next year, May. But the kids, their last vacation before we travel to Ghana in June is in March. So my question is whether we can renew the passport in March. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, this is where I'll end the question time. Uh, they will respond to the last questions, but if uh, you want to ask question, please put your questions uh, go to the chat room. There's a link, Word document link. Click on it, put your questions there, your contact email, and Ghana High Commission will definitely get back to you on that. Um, Honorable, I'll leave it to you for you to answer the last questions for us, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I can confirm that uh, you can use your Ghana passport, get it to Ghana, and when you are I think we've lost their connection. Get Ghana mm -hmm. with your Ghana passport. Some time ago, uh, some uh, UK Ghanaians complained to me. I spoke to the Ghana Immigration Service Controller General, and he said they had sent a circular to the all the uh, to the airport. And so it should not be a problem. That I can confirm because I met with him just two weeks ago here, three weeks when they came for a program. And, um, well, uh, I think since Nigerians are holding Ghana passports, well, people make these allegations all the time. When you know, if you know of an... to be and uh, when we find it we are going to seize it from the person and if possible report him to the police but what you are saying is that somebody told you that oh a Nigerian says if you give him 200 he can get you a passport well I don't know about that <laughs> but if you are a Nigerian you can't get a passport unless you are also a Ghanaian just as some people have UK citizenship 
and they are Ghanaian. So your father is UK, your mother is UK. You get a Ghanaian passport. And as to whether you cannot use a passport for the same purpose, invariably, you, the passport, if you have a Ghana passport, you can use it for a lot of purposes. But in the UK, for instance, if they ask for your uh, proof of identity, even a driver license will suffer. It looks like we've lost their connection again. I will uh, try and connect them for them to give us their last um, answers. So producer, um, if you are there, can we take a quick ad break? Then uh, we will connect them back again for them to come and respond to the lab. <laughs> My name is Kale Boss, hmm? the only boss with one S. Happy New Month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Oh, do you know why life has been made so easy? It's because of Tap Tap Send. People, Tap Tap Send is here to make your life easy if you want to transfer money to Ghana, if you want to transfer from USA, if you want to transfer from UK, Europe, Canada, a lot of places all to Ghana. And guess what? When it comes to Ghana, there's no e levy charge. <laughs> so, what are you waiting for? Download Tap Tap Send from Google Play Store and App Store and be ready for exciting offers coming your way each time, every time on Tap Tap Send. Tap, tap, send, send. Tap, tap, send, send more, spend less. Tina, omit yourself for us now. ENG, uh, ENG, last set of answers from the High Commission. Tina, meet yourself for us. Tina, meet yourself. Okay, cool. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. I'm sorry, uh, Rabanu Busa a question me about whether I said you ever go into other jurisdictions yeah. with regards to Ghana card. Yes. Uh, the process that is being rolled out now. And yet, London, the NIA they are going to, they are setting a set of officers who are going across the world to train Omu and break it into zones, about six zones. And I'm almost sending for a couple training consular officers. You know? And my from there on, they will take over to become the registration officers. Sending them to the London, there, yes. But other countries, Germany, Holland, uh, France, China, South Africa, India, where we are, you know, local training officers. So I'm a registration officer. Now, they are rolled out. So, uh, you know. In the same way, so I do make the year a bit in a way, sensitization, any engagement, in come here any more the year. You have to also study up for other countries. You have to go Berlin, you have to go Rome, you have to go America, New York, you have to go UFS, Washington, ne other countries, in the Ghana for a part of this year in come here. You have to change here now. You have introduce the new and innovative. Uh, approaches here, uh, yeah, they even handle consular services with the bringing on board of uh, private sector uh, your friends, uh, companies to help us improve and uh, in the provision of uh, uh, passport and visa services. It doesn't mean, say, your uh, officers you know, at the missions, you know, they are not up to it. Uh, some people have been accusing me since me by is uh, I seem to be so protective and defensive of uh, uh, EFNs, uh, our officers at the mission. English, yes. English, English, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so much saying they don't understand. Leave most Ghanaians understand, um, Chi. Hey. Uh, speak, speak English. Speak English. Speak English. Speak English. Yes. Uh, we don't assume speak. every Ghanaian is a cheap speaking person. It's okay. No, it's okay. Please, don't. can we carry on with the show, please? 
speak, 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 speak. I'm speaking English. No, you're speaking English. Yes, I was. Yes, yes, speak, 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 I changed. Speak, 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 speak. Hey, sorry, oh. <laughs> it seems I, I, I got one. I thought I was speaking in English, not knowing that <laughs> I had speech to repeat. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, so we're going to all the other countries uh, to engage them and sensitize them on the new system that we are introducing uh, in the provision of consular services. Um, London, we have been here. Our next stop will be in Berlin. From there, we'll be going to uh, Washington and then we'll go to New York to engage Ghanaians and to introduce also to them so our new service here. Yeah. Okay. This new service <laughs> that uh, this new service that uh, we are bringing uh, on board. Right. So we're reaching out. We reach out to every uh, uh, country to make sure our compatriots are on the same page with us as to the new approach that the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs uh, is bringing on board. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I will ask uh, my director to come and do a little bit of vote of thanks. But, um, Honorable, before you go, I think uh, in the UK, the Ghana High Commission in the UK are doing a similar uh, kind of service. Uh, one of the audience was asking about satellite services, um, uh, satellite office. Uh, in the UK, I know Ghana High Commission have been moving down to Midlands, Northwest, to provide uh, this uh, consular service to our Ghanaians living out of outside London. Mm -hmm. um, about what about our brothers and sisters in uh, Germany? They have to travel all the way to Berlin before they will be able to get this kind of services. What is your ministry doing to help uh, 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 decentralize some of our consular service in some of these big countries like US, Canada, America, and stuff like that? Consulate. The consulate, we have consulate that. Is it, yes, in, in, in Germany, when you go to Hamburg, Hamburg. <laughs> we are about to open a, a consulate, yes. consulate yes. there who will provide all the services. Hanover. Uh, in Hanover, we are in the process. Uh, in some of the big, big cities in Germany, we are in the process mm. of opening. We already have. Oh, we already have right. these consulates over there, right. even in the UK. I think there's some discussions even on the ground to open a, a consul general in, uh, in, in Dublin, right? Yes. yes. So in all these other countries, yes, we have plans if we haven't to open consuls, honorary consuls and consul general offices to provide these uh, 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 services that are compatriots me. So we are, continuously be trying to bring the services to our compatriots in the, in the areas that they are. Of course, sometimes you may think that in a particular area, in opening the honorable consul or consul general, we look at the congregation of our compatriots before we take that decision. So sometimes some people may think that, oh, in this area, there are a number of Ghanaians. But when you really get down, you find out that they are not as many as will merit the creation of an honorary consul. So we we'll look at a particular region or area, put it together, put it under an honorary consul, and then we'll do it. So we are on track. We are on track. Yes. Thank you. Can we take your last words uh, from the High Commissioner and the, uh, uh, his excellency? Let me say that uh, we thank TapTap for this opportunity to reach us out, to enable us to reach out to our compatriots here. The High Commission's doors are always open. We are open to suggestions. It is because of you that we are here and we'll do our best to serve you. As humans, we have shortcomings, but we also appeal to you Wherever you get to know some shortcomings, let us know. You know how to reach us. Please, you can send us a mail. Or you can even telephone 
that is always difficult because you may have to be told to hold on for a while. But all in all, we'll do our best to serve you because that is one of the primary reasons why we are here as a Ghana mission. <coughs> Thank you and have a good evening. I, I think uh, the High Commissioner has said it all. So let me go on record in thanking TAPTA for this opportunity, granted me and the team and the mission to be able to interact with you, to engage Ghanaians and to bring to your notice the new innovative approach in handling uh, uh, console uh, uh, matters. And uh, we hope that uh, with the information that you've given, the interactions that you had, questions that you've been asked, asked and answers that you've given, uh, I guess a compatriot will buy in in the new approach to provide their passport applications and visa services to Ghanaians in the UK and Ireland. And I hope that, as the ambassador said, where there are shortfalls, we are ready to listen and to see the best that we can do to improve the service. The introduction of the assets does not necessarily mean that we have achieved uh, all that we are looking for. There will still be room for improvement for which we will rely on you as our clients, as the recipients of the service to be able to uh, bring it to our attention. And then we'll do our utmost best to do the best that we can. We were elected by Ghanaians to provide a service. A part of the service is not just any service, but to provide a good service and to make sure that life becomes more meaningful to Ghanaians under the administration of Nana Kufuad, for which we are striving very hard to get there. And I know we will get there with your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, we would also like to say that um, we want to thank you very much for uh, making it possible to engage with our customers and our audience. I know how long the day has been for you and uh, your team. But yes, still, it's almost 11. You are still here uh, talking to us. Uh, Tap Tap Send and OT Media, I want to promise that uh, all the engagement that you want to do in Europe, uh, we will be happy to partner with you and support with our media platform and reach out to all our customers in Germany, Europe, in America, wherever that you will be. We are happy to do this partnership with you so that we can reach out to our Ghanaian community in the diaspora. Uh, before you go, I'll ask our director for Africa, Groove uh, Malto, to give us a short vote of thanks. Malto. I don't think Malto is here. Yo, and there's a mouth to Nihon Modia. I will say that and penny four. Yeah, that must be brave. Say, my name, bre. Yes, that's our battle. That is the police. Where that's a that's a that's a Please unmute yourself, please. Fantastic. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, that your brilliant exercise of muting everyone works because it means I was muted and I couldn't speak, so that's fine. So anyway, um, oh um, please, uh, sorry, I'm not interrupting you. Uh, I've been waiting for this question, but I would like if I it can be I answered. Think. I have the link. I'll bring it later on. But since it was my general question, I wanted to know about this Ghana card. Yeah, whether Isaac, you can. Yes, Isaac, I, I wanted beg. just to know. Yeah, Isaac, I beg. Let's let's. We can pick the question and we would pass it on to the High Commission and we'll come back to you. We promise. Um, but we have to let Honorable like go. It's been a it's been a it's been a long evening. So Honorable Papa Sankuma, my big thank you a lot. We keep meeting. Um, I've met you so many times and you've supported us and you've helped us in many, many ways. Thank you again for tonight. Thank you for thank you for that. Thank you, um uh, many stuff for coming on the show and thank you for allowing us to bring our customers to you. There was, for your information, there was 400 people on, on the Zoom call. And that's quite a difficult call to manage generally anyway on a Zoom. 
Um, so at least 400 Ghanaians or friends of Ghana were tonight listening to what you were saying. And you gave us a lot of information and you gave us a lot of access and a lot of detail. And we really, really appreciate it. And to all of our lovely customers on the show, I smile at some of the questions we ask. I smile at some of the comments we have. It's a very, we, Ghanaians are lovely people. We, we love interacting. We love asking questions. We love complaining. We love loving at each other. This is just part of who we are. So this is a lighthearted forum where we all have some fun. We all laugh. And at the end of the day, like we go home happy. We are just, we just great people. So nobody is here to upset anyone. If anybody said anything to upset you, we are sorry. Take it from me. I am behalf of Top Thompson and the show. Nobody, we are not here to offend anyone. We love you all. I love you all. I'm an Arab boy, maybe between yet, but I speak to you small, small. I also speak English. We are all one people and we love each other. So it's great to see all of you. And I hope that you've enjoyed this and you've learned from this. The questions that were not able to be asked, we will pass them on to the High Commission. And I know they will come back to you because I know them. I see them. So I know they will come back to you. And if we can help in any way, and I hope I was on come on. Please let us know because we have. I'm in Germany right now. I was in Berlin yesterday. I, I was in I was in Bremen today, and I'm in Hamburg right now. We have customers all across Europe and customers in US who we can bring together and mobilize so that they can hear this message of improvement, 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 improvement that you are on agenda to do. And we we are more than happy to help you. So thank you very much again. We really appreciate it. And um, hopefully, uh, honorable, I will see, I'll, I'll, I'll see you all soon. Um. And for those of you who are staying and you have tough, tough, and questions, I'll be here for the rest of the evening and we can have a general chat after Honorable Leeds um, about tough, tough, and thank you very much again and have a good evening. All, of you. all right. Thank Marcia, you. Thank you as well. Um, and for those who still want to join them tomorrow, um, they have a program tomorrow as well. And I've posted the link in the chat uh, room you can follow the link register and join them tomorrow as well tomorrow evening they are going to be on ghana awareness forum uh tomorrow to continue the discussion and engagement so please for follow the link and join them tomorrow thank you everyone uh on this uh part we bring it to a close and malta will take over uh with the tap tap send focus session so if you have any question with regards to tap tap send join malta producer I'm out. <laughs> Spend less. At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you're not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed.